Hey, welcome back to the second channel. As always, I have a comment to respond to today. And the comment for today was asking why my OBS setup looks the way it does uh, and how to get something similar. You wanted a full guide from installing OBS all the way up until wherever the hell I'm at. So let's do it. First and foremost, you're obviously gonna wanna download OBS. And I feel like if I need to walk you through entirely how to do that, you may need a little book, you know, computer for dummies, but it's cool, don't worry, you got it. Now, the second thing I would suggest doing was downloading a plugin called Vertical. It's completely free. It's made by a company called Atium. There's also a chap called Harris Heller. He's a YouTuber. He helped create this. It's honestly the best plugin you could ever wish for for OBS. Okay, so now that you've got the basics down, I'm going to show you how I get my OBS look in the way that it does. I I'll try to guide you the best I can, but I don't think there's anything special <laughs> about the way I do it. It's just a case of being organized and using the space to the best of your ability. For now, you will see me in a tiny little box off the screen over there, okay? So we're looking at this window right here, which is the vertical plugin. A brief summary of how this works is you can live stream to TikTok and Instagram Reels and anything vertically, or you can actually change the resolution if you go into settings and you can change it to 1920 by 1080 and you can stream to Twitch and YouTube simultaneously straight from here. Well, I don't really advise you doing that because uh, Twitch doesn't really like restreaming, uh, but maybe kick, I don't know, figure it out. The chances of you getting caught are pretty slim but at the same time it's like do you really want to take that risk you can also record vertical videos straight from here so that speeds up the editing process and then additionally there's something called backtrack which if you're familiar with replay buffer something we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute you can actually say you're recording a video or you're doing a live stream when you tap that button you can also assign it to a hotkey on your keyboard so as soon as you press that it will record anywhere from a 20 second to a two minute clip and it will automatically be in vertical format so even if you're streaming at the standard ratio like this, you can go ahead and record vertical clips without any editing, ready to go post straight to social media, help grow your channel or your social media platforms. These are the settings that I use for vertical. I don't know if you guys want to see this, but 25,000 kilobits per second, that's pretty high. You can probably drop that down to 6,000 to 10,000. Bear in mind that using vertical will add some additional stress to your computer. Nothing crazy if you're running a decent PC, but uh, it's just worth keeping in mind. I record for a minute, so generally any funny moments or good clips, uh, that pretty much covers it. In the streaming tab, but you can put in your TikTok key, your Instagram real keys, anything like that. You can even stream vertically to YouTube if you so wish. Uh, I wouldn't advise it, but that's up to you. Everything else in here is pretty much the same. I've got it set to sync with whatever my OBS settings are naturally. And that is pretty much it for the vertical plugin. Then I also have my Twitch or my YouTube chat, depending on which platform I'm streaming to at the time. That's just in this little corner so I can just flick between the two. Generally, I'll keep this open if I'm recording, this if I'm streaming. And these down here are your vertical sources. So all of these sources over here are for the normal OBS window. And over here, these are the windows that are gonna be used on vertical. And the really cool thing about vertical is that if you change scenes in the middle of a stream, so right now I'm recording my PC, if I switch to full screen, this would also go full screen. I can't really show you because, you know, I'm like, you know, re recording this, but it's really, really cool and really useful. It just means if you're streaming on Twitch and you're streaming on TikTok, when you switch scenes TikTok will also switch scenes with you just bear in mind that you do have to set this up separately from OBS but it's incredibly straightforward piece of cake Hi, okay, I'm over here now. I didn't want you getting confused. Uh, okay, so the reason I've done this is so that I can show you everything on this side. Uh, so these are all my scenes. These are, this is a work in progress. I've just started getting into streaming. So I'm, I, most of this is just basic recording stuff. But for now, this screen right here is my PC gameplay. So if I'm playing Minecraft or something on the PC, or I want to show you what I'm looking at on my monitor, that is what this scene is for. Just underneath that, we have a PS5 scene. And the reason I do that is because I'm using an Elgato capture card, which has a slight bit of delay. So that means if something cool happens on the PS5 and I'm doing a bit of gameplay, people aren't gonna see my reaction or even hear my audio for two seconds after the fact. So this whole scene is just completely delayed to make sure that everything is in sync. I hope that makes sense. We've got a full screen camera, which is what I generally use when I'm recording videos, such as the beginning of this one. We have a starting soon screen, AFK screen. I also have an intermission screen, which kind of messed up because the plugin I was using with it, uh, they, they made it paid and it just, they've removed all the effects. It's super annoying. <laughs> I've got a full screen chat screen. God, that's hard to say. The only difference between this and my other one is simply that this one has a chat box. So when I'm live, people can interact with me and see their own messages pop up on screen. And then finally, we have a stream ending, which automatically plays some music. Now, if we go back over to this window, you'll be able to see that I also have some live effects. This is something new I'm playing with. Uh, people will be able to like donate some bits or use channel points to be able to zoom into my face. Just get some really cool effects going on that makes engagement a little bit better, but that's a work in progress. Under here, I think is one of the things that I do differently from a lot of streamers and that is stacking resources inside of scenes. What? 
Inside of one scene, I put all of my audio sources, all of that kind of stuff, it's in one scene. What I do is I just import that scene right here and all of my audio is automatically added to whatever scene that is. It just makes life a little bit easier. Same with this audio stack here, but it's delayed. So again, we use that with the Elgato scene. Then I have a dedicated scene for widgets. So I put them all inside that scene and I import that scene onto everything else like what you're watching now. Same thing with the alerts. And then uh, for cameras, we have a similar thing as the audio where I have all of my different camera setups. So for instance, we have this vertical one over here. We have my beautiful face in a circle, which is good for like reaction videos. And then we have this rectangle on the other side, which I generally put with all of my gameplay. That's pretty much it for scenes. If we move down to sources, only tip I really have for you is to use game capture rather than PC monitor captures, screen captures, just because game captures uh, are more reliable, but less stress on your PC, less obviously in this case, I'm recording my actual PC screen, but if you're playing a game, use the game capture. And I think that's pretty much it for all of this stuff. Okay, so once you've got all of your scenes and your sources, your cameras, your microphones, all that kind of stuff, once that's ready to go, let's take a look at everything else that I add, such as filters and properties and things like that to make sure that your stream is the best possible quality it can be. So in terms of audio, believe it or not, my microphone isn't actually that great. It's a Samsung CO1U. I've had this thing since I was about 15 years old. It's nearly, yeah, it's older than my children, okay? So that's, that's a perspective for you. And I think at the time I paid like 60 quid for it. So now it's probably worth a couple of pennies. So what I do is I use a software called Voice Mod. Now I think some elements of this are free, but I've actually got the paid version just because uh, I got a lifetime thing with it for like dirt cheap, but I just use the clean setting. So if I turn this off, you may be able to hear a slight bit of difference, but I think it just crisps up my voice a little bit more. And also I don't have a pop filter and I feel like this just kind of helps it. In the software, not only do you have the stuff that makes your natural voice sound kind of cool, but you also have a bunch of different voice effects and sound effects that people on your stream can interact with and they're adding new features all the time. So we could run with something like this if you want to, I don't know how this sounds. Or we could sing. Or we could call for help. I don't know. Okay, so that is voice mod. I'll leave a link to everything in the description if you want to check them out. But that's one of the best investments I've ever made. And like I said, I got the lifetime license. There's no monthly fees. It's just one simple software that will work uh, for as long as they support it. Now, in addition to using voice mod, I also have a couple of filters that I use inside of OBS. I really try to make my audio sound as good as possible. And I am actually thinking of upgrading my mic at some point soon. But anyway, if we go to microphone and then filters, I also have three filters that I use on a regular basis. Feel free to take a look at these. I'm not going to read them all out to you, but we have a compressor. We have a Marvel GEQ, which is a plugin. These are the settings for the EQ that I use. And again, this depends entirely on your, your tone of voice, the, the sound that you're going for. I generally prefer like a really deep, rich kind of tone. I mean, this is my natural voice, but it just emphasizes that. And then I have some noise suppression because generally me and my kids are running around or there's like a tiny bit of static that I don't really enjoy. And that just helps kind of remove that. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in any of this stuff. This is just what I found works best with me. And I hope that you can find something similar. And there's a million people on YouTube who can guide you through it a lot better than I could. Okay. And then the final thing to do with audio that I want to talk about is actually separating your clips onto multiple tracks so that when you're editing a video later on, it becomes so much easier. I've made an entire video on it. There'll be a card on screen now and again a link in the description but essentially if you go over to your microphone and then you go advanced properties you'll be able to see all of your audio sources right over here a very brief summary of everything that i put in my a very brief summary a br a very brief summary of everything that I put in my other video. These are different tracks, okay? So imagine these as different outputs, different lanes that the audio is going into. So for lane one, you're gonna want all of your audio going in one direction. So that's your microphone, your PC audio, your gameplay, your stream alerts, everything. That is what your stream is gonna see. That is why you want everything on track one or lane one turned on. And now we're gonna split up the lanes so that we can change them and move them around later on in editing. So track number two is just your microphone. Track number three is your PC audio or your gameplay. Track number four for me is my Elgato stuff. Track five is my stream alerts and overlays. And the reason you do this is so that in editing, if track number two, your microphone is too quiet, you can bump it up without bumping up the music on track number three. Once again, check out the full video I made on it. Uh, not because I want more clicks, but just I go into detail on it more there. And I feel like if you're going to do this, you should probably get a better understanding of how it all works. Okay. So one other thing that people may not pay too much attention to is your transitions. And one really cool 
typical way of doing this, you have your basic transition over here, which is either going to be for me, it's closing door, which is a stinger transition that I purchased elsewhere. But for you, it will probably be either cut or fade. And that basically means that when you switch from one scene to another, there'll be a little transition that plays like this. I don't actually want this scene, so I'm gonna, I've got to switch back now. So you can naturally have this just switch fade from one window to another, but if you actually right click on one of these, But if you actually right click on one of these, I've just right clicked on the PC gameplay, you can go down all the way to transition override and change it to anything there. So say for instance, I only want my little closey gate thing when I switch to or from my PC gameplay, then I can set up just for that, which is really cool because I may not want transitions on certain things uh, and that's completely optimized. Again, it's a tiny little thing, but it's something that adds a little bit more oomph to your content. Okay, so that's pretty much everything in terms of OBS itself and customization. Now, let me show you all the settings that I use and then we'll wrap up the video. The reason I wanna show you settings is because you could have the best looking thing in the world, but if you're not streaming at the right quality or things are a little bit weird in the settings, your viewers are not really gonna get the full package. It's nearly over. Okay, so in general, there's not much really that I've changed in output. I've got it set up so that I automatically start my replay buffer. Oh, replay buffer, by the way, is very similar to the vertical thing where it records 30 seconds to a minute, but it just records from your content. So if you get a really cool kill in Call of Duty or Valorant, for instance, replay buffer just captures the last 30 seconds or a minute. And again, you can just trim it down or upload that as a clip by itself. Feel free to pause and check out any of these settings, but I don't think there's anything interesting in this panel. This is how you live stream. I'm sure you guys already know this, but you can just connect your account to Twitch or YouTube. You don't have to worry about any technical stuff. Okay, output. This is where things get a little bit more fun. Remember how I was saying about the audio tracks? Having everything in lane one, you want to make sure that your streaming settings, your audio track is lane one, track number one. Okay, so that makes sure that everything is going in one direction while lane two, three, four, five, and six, that is for editing. That is for later on. That is not for live streaming. Once again, I'm not going to read everything out as we go through this, but feel free to pause on any of my settings if you're interested. And once again, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but just a brief summary, CBR means it's a controlled bit rate rather than the quality of your stream fluctuating based on internet connection and your PC and all that kind of stuff. I think that the CBR setting just keeps everything in line so that you are constantly streaming at around about 6,000 kilobits per second, meaning that your quality throughout the stream is gonna be pretty much the same the whole way through. So again, feel free to have a look at all this, copy my settings, but I'm using a pretty decent PC. Um, just make sure that your PC can handle it. Now in recording settings, you are going to want everything as it sees here. Yours probably won't be grayed out. Mine is because I've got the vertical window recording in the background. Make sure if you're recording videos and you're doing that multi-lane thing that I told you about, that you've got all of these boxes over here checked. Otherwise, they're not going to show up in your recording. These are my encoder settings. Again, 25,000 kilobits per second. It's probably a little bit too high for most people generally recording, but I try to make the best quality content that I possibly can. So that is why mine is pretty high. Just bear in mind, the higher it is, uh, not only is it more stressful for your PC, but it's also going to take up more storage uh, in your computer as you record longer videos. Once again, feel free to go ahead, copy whatever you want. In audio settings, all of my bit rates are turned to 320, which I don't think they naturally are. I could be wrong. And then finally, the last tab over here is for your replay buffer. And that just determines the amount of time that your replay buffer records for. So if you tap the button to record the last 30 seconds or a minute, you can change that time here. Now in audio settings, I've got pretty much all of my stuff disabled because like I said earlier, we've got the audio stack over here, which means that all of this isn't necessarily needed. There are some things over here like hotkeys, which means you'll be able to mute your microphone by pressing a button. That could be useful to you, but I don't use any of it. These are my video settings, nothing crazy. It's just the resolution of my screen and the FPS value. Hotkeys are going to be your best friend, especially if you don't have something like a stream deck, which I currently don't have. I've actually got a large keyboard and I've programmed the number buttons on the very side of the keyboard, you know, the one to nine, and you've got those weird surrounding buttons. That is my stream deck. I know what each of those buttons do. I've got a little picture of each thing on top of the key. So for instance, when I press number one, it switches to my PC gameplay. When I press number two, it goes full screen. Set things like that up because trust me, it's going to make your live streaming so much easier. And then finally, in the advanced tab, set your process priority to high, which basically means I think that you're giving OBS higher priority. So if you've got a game that is quite taxing, it won't put as much stress on OBS because OBS is considered more valuable than the game. And once again, feel free to go ahead and pause if there's anything here you want to have a look at, but that is pretty much it. Okay, so that's my OBS setup. I hope it helps. I know it's quite long. I've tried making it as in-depth as possible, and this is what I use for all of my content, whether it's streaming or video, and I'm constantly upgrading things. I've recently just 
bought this light, trying to upgrade my setup and make it as professional as possible, but I'm, I'm still learning. You know, that's what content creation is. It's constantly upgrading and evolving and changing depending on your niche and your audience. It's, it's an endless journey, but a journey that you are gonna love and thrive in nonetheless. Also, I'm so sorry this video took longer than my other ones to create. I really wanted to make sure that for a video as in-depth as this, I wanted to have everything looking professional. Again, I'm sorry for the wait, but it's here and I hope it is, um, I hope it's everything you wanted it to be. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to make videos on and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.